Well, every day we're bombarded with bad news, from terrorist attacks to racial divides to an ever-sinking economy. Well, Bishop Harry Jackson believes all this and more are supernatural signs. Take a look. God is giving us signs that we should wake up. Harry Jackson, presiding bishop over 1,800 churches, says God is trying to shake awake a slumbering Christendom. An alarm has been going off, and folks have been, like we do some mornings, just rolling over in the bed and hitting the alarm and saying, oh, I've got time, I'll wake up later. Jackson believes those with a discerning ear can hear God's alarm sounding as they see divisions ripping apart ethnic groups, races, religions, and tribes. They can hear heaven's cry for them to repent as natural disasters, diseases, and plagues increase in the earth. Well, for more on this are our dear friend, Bishop Harry Jackson, and welcome. It's great to have you here. Good to be here with you, Gordon. You're talking about alarm clocks going off. Yes. Uh, what alarms have been sounding? Well, we talked about it in the piece that just rolled. I think if you look at in America right now, the racial divide is a huge one. Uh, and the Bible says in the book of Matthew that ethnos will rise up against ethnic group. That's what nation against nation means. And also there are going to be kingdoms in the far reaches of the earth that are going to be struggling at war with one another. And uh, that's happening. But I think those signs uh, also have a call to them that we should return to God. In fact, the book of Joel, where I got a lot of the information that we're talking about, talks about the fact that God is simply saying, return to me. And if we'll do that, he promises to beat disease, warfare, family breakdown, personal addictions is a real problem that we have here in the United States and around the world. All of these things are coming forth because people are separated from God. You, you use an image, and I love it, where it's the alarm goes off and we're like asleep in bed and we roll over and we tap the alarm and then we go back to sleep. Yes. What's, what's it going to take for us to really wake up? Well, I think waking up, Gordon, is going to be a process. Now, this time of the year, many, many people start with a fast and they start to seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Joel and James, you'll find that there is a kind of layered approach to repentance and returning to God, where God says something really kind of strange, like repent, return to me, and then he says repent with fasting and mourning. And the idea is that you start a fast, you're trying to get close to God, but the more we see our separation from God, the more we own the bad things that keep us away from him, uh, then we can move forward. An example would be, years ago I used to smoke cigarettes, and I'd only smoked them seasonally, but it was a habit I couldn't shake about 26, 7 years ago. But when I came to a point and I asked, God, help me see this habit from your perspective, mm. suddenly I began to hate this stuff. And I also found that there was grace for what I identified not being of God to beat it, to kick it, to get out of that place. And I think that's the kind of thing that we have to have. We've got blind spots on Gordon about the things that really are uh, big issues to God that keep us out of the blessing of God. But he wants to come and bless us and move well for us. Are, are we too busy to even see it? I mean, wow. that's, I mean, that's well, one of the things I've, mm -hmm. I've noticed, and, and it's, I have a unique perspective on American culture because I lived overseas. And so it's, for me, coming back into American culture was sort of a cross-cultural experience wow. all over again. And it's, it's amazing to me just how busy we are. We're, we're so busy, we don't have time for relationship. Uh, we don't have time for contemplation. We don't, uh, just sort of reflecting, what am I doing? What's my goal in life? Where am I going? We set a, we, we almost to schedule appointments, you know, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I'm one of those. Let's fast at the start of the year. Yeah. Uh, we set appointments. I'm going to hear from God now. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> as though he's got to talk when we <laughs> call out. Yeah. Well, I, I had an amazing experience with the Lord where I, I, I had all this set up. I had it all scheduled. And he wanted to talk to me before it all started. Mm -hmm. And I started complaining. I, I, this isn't the right time. And I, I caught myself, what am I doing? If God wants to talk to me, please, let, uh, you know, everything else he's got. And let, let me just sit and listen. Are we too yes. busy to even hear it? 
Well, I think it's a great question because I do think that's a major aspect of it. We're too busy, and can I add, we're also too religious. Mm -hmm. So you had two dynamics. We're saying, God, you're going to show up when I decide to fast at this time of the year, and then you're going to speak when it's convenient for me. So I've started doing something I recommend to your audience today, and that is I schedule my time with God, but I make it a little bit flexible about how I approach him, meaning I know I'm going to read the word, I know I'm going to sing and worship in some manner, but I'm going to spend some time getting still enough to listen. I think that's what you're saying. And so for me, over the last three or four months, I've been scheduling a large block of time in the morning where I'm going to do a little exercise, as you talked about earlier in the program, and then I'm going to just be quiet and do a little bit, but wait on God, and then some days, most of that time is Bible reading or also listen to the Bible on audio. Uh, I think it's important. Well, you've, you've pointed out one of our biggest blind spots is the state of uh, our relation uh, interracially. That yes. We are, we are not uh, moving together as, as, as brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, there's a huge racial divide, and the recent events are just showing how big that is. Yes. What can we do about that? Well, I believe that we can heal it if we recognize this axiom. In a divided society, only the church can model unity. So we have seven bridges to peace that I believe that we can take. I won't elaborate on all of them, but churches can affect education, economic development, development of small businesses. Churches can affect the criminal justice system. There are ministries and organizations that are doing that. And if we look at the race problem in America today, we all say we have a class problem, we have a poverty problem, and then it's a race problem. It's not just you're black or brown, but if you're black and you can't read at the third grade, you're going to be in some kind of trouble with the law if you are living in generational poverty. It, it narrows your options. Mm -hmm. And so we, the church, can be a witness of Jesus, and it can be an evangelistic tool, but we have to have a, a clearinghouse of ideas, and we have to recognize that we've got to do it together. You need the government to do a little bit. The church has got to do stuff that the government can't do, and we don't need the government messing with our stuff, so to speak. And then we have the opportunity, though, to get business involved. So all these elements have to work in concert. You've got a conference coming up yes, sir. Uh, on Martin Luther King Day. Yes. Tell us about that. It's January 15th. It's the actual birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, T.D. Jakes, who is Black America's pastor, in my view, along with James Robison, John Hagee, uh, A.R. Bernard out of New York City, uh, Tony Evans. Uh, there are a number of key leaders that are coming together, and we're going to examine these seven bridges to peace that I just talked about, and we're going to make a commitment to one another to, over the next year or so, to work on specific things in concert. We'll sign a declaration of cooperation. And um, you've been someone who's been helpful in convening, and actually you helped me confirm the idea about this thing. Uh, had you not been excited about it, I probably never would have done it. Hmm. So that is really going to happen. Um, I am excited about it. Yes. I, I think um, we need to start having a more forward vision uh, mm -hmm. as, as the church. What does the church stand for? Yeah. Um, and part of that forward vision is, can we stand for reconciliation? Can yes. we stand for helping those in need? Yes. Um, and some of the things you were talking about of how do you address the issue of poverty? Mm -hmm. and how do you address the issue of education? How do you address the criminal justice system? And, yeah. and how do you get true justice in that system? Yeah. Uh, and I think the church can speak into all of those areas. We really can because we have both the haves and the have nots. They're billionaire Christians. They are people who are trained right here at Regent University who are lawyers, who have insight, understand public policy. We need their help to help the down and out guy who is coming to Christ today with a criminal record and he's got kids. He and those kids are going to be messed up in the future unless Christ, through his church, makes a difference in his life. And we can make a difference. And if you want to do that, 
On Sunday, January 15th, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, Bishop Jackson will join T.D. Jakes, Tony Evans, and 75 other leaders at the Potter's House Church in Dallas for a summit they're calling Healing the Racial Divide. They'll be talking about practical steps to achieve racial, racial rec reconciliation in America. If you want to know more, just go to cbn.com for a link. Well, that's all the time we have. We leave you these words from Proverbs. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. God bless you. We'll see you again.